Goblin Slayers, licensed and produced by Funimation and Crunchyroll. Studios White Fox, Networks, ATX, Tokyo MX, Sun TV, and BS11. Based on the works by Kuma Kagya. Please support the official release. Hello there, YouTube Jack here with more Goblin Slayer Episode 2. And last time. Well, it was an introduction to this beautiful series in which we take a closer look at the most vile creatures to ever walk this goddamn world, in which they kill, maim, and rape as their little green hearts desire, so that we can feel justified when our big man in the armor kills and slaughters elderly and children alike. <sighs> It's a happy show, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, Goblin Slayer. Which is basically, you know, gonna be our gory uber serious series for this season. There's a lot of ass. Try to say that ten times fast. Serious, serious, serious this season. Serious, serious this season, serious, serious this season. Okay, actually, that's not too bad. Yeah, so we had. God damn it, I forgot my name list. I need to write a name list. I don't think we have many names as of yet, other than Goblin Slayer himself, and that one I can't remember, who would have thought. But I will definitely need a name list for all the other colorful characters that will eventually join this beautiful adventure. So, yeah. I don't really think this show needs too much introduction. We've had the previous episode where our heroine joined the little stupid adventurer group and they then ventured out to kill some goblins and, well, they got killed themselves. Well, two out of three got killed, the other one only got raped and is now horribly mentally scarred for life. But only two out of three got killed. So, <laughs> actually two out of four, I should say, but, you know, Miss Heroin is the main character, she's not gonna die in the first episode. Maybe later down the line, that would be fun. I've said it before, by the way, I have read a little bit of the manga, but I don't remember shit about it. I, like, not even the first episode didn't spark any memories to come up whatsoever, so... This is still effectively blind. And even then, I think, like, by episode 3, we would have already caught up however much of the manga I would have read anyway. So, then it's blind blind. It's double blind. Blindception. So... I say so a lot. Let's gonna do this episode, shall we? And three, two, one, go! The show contains scenes that some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Apparently, was that such a backlash for episode one that they felt the, the need to point that out? And he seems fairly peeved. Well, no, you're plenty mad. And then there is the ninja. Because those are some serious ninja skills to sneak up on people like that. So I'm gonna throw that out there. Is that Mr. Goblin Slayer as a kid? Because, oh, well, we're doing a good job hiding his face. Yeah, apparently, that's a thing. And you're raising all kinds of death flags here. Of course you go to sleep in a nude. Oh yeah, an opening. Haven't had one of those in the first episode.
That's a pretty slick visual. Admittingly, not what I was expecting. Not in a bad way. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and apparently this is also in English. I say apparently because it sounds English, but I can't actually pick up what they're saying. But it's freaking bloody amazing, I can tell you that. I mean, the first episode already had such amazingly crafted visuals, but this... This is awesome. Those are some beautiful bouncy boobs. So, no death flags. I mean, okay, there might be death flags, but, you know, nobody did die, so... At least they t those two didn't die, let's put it like that. Goblin Slayer. So how do you plan to eat with that helmet on? Never mind. That's a thing that can be done. Lots of goblins to kill, apparently. Well, aren't you a cheerful woman? It still feels like she's rising all kinds of death flags, honestly. I don't know. Just looking all nice and innocent. Just kind of asking for something horrible to happen. True that. Although you would be out of work then, but better altogether, I'd say. Well, you know, she's got to do her job, too, there. Doesn't seem to be too much. Hmm. 
I don't know about eating them. Well, apparently they do. Okay, good to know. <laughs> well, I guess got working at a front desk, you don't have to learn how to smile all the time. Of course there is one. <laughs> Another wonderful upside about working at the front desk are the people who are trying to impress you, I'd say. <laughs> At least get some sales out of it. Hmm. Well, who cares about pretty armor, honestly? <laughs> yes, it would appear so. Well, of course they don't pay much. Well, this guy's already setting himself up to be a very likable character, isn't he? Gotta introduce a whole slew of colorful characters here all at once, huh? By the way, aren't you here for a signature or something? Would it? Are they? <laughs> oh, it's been a month, huh? So she's learning something, huh? Good for her. Well, the storm has subsided, so can go pick up your goblin requests. <laughs> what even was that? What even was that? And she's gone.
Well, once again, that is probably gonna work out just fine for them. Of course, they know better than some stupid lady who's handling all kinds of related stuff to that. That was a horrible phrase sentence. Hasn't he always? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Ah, back to being nude. I mean, then again, this is what well, disqualifies as an adult show, I guess, so might as well throw in some nudity when you get the chance. Ah, uh, were they burning someone there? Uh, yeah, no way that already happened to you. Nope. Oh yeah, that older sister person we saw before. Oh hey, you made it, I guess. Makes sense, I guess. I mean, if everyone always did die, then I don't think goblins would be laughed at so much. Uh, that was A, an amazing shot, and B, I don't think arrows are that fast that in the middle of the night you wouldn't see a burning arrow coming. I'll say it again that the visual and music together are amazing here. Oh, <laughs> nice analogy there. Honestly, just the reaction was hilarious. Bang. Yeah. 
yes, he probably is not the most mentally sound person out there. So you're just gonna have them burn alive or something? Yeah, it's probably a bit off-putting. I find it somewhat interesting to get pissed out miracles like that. God damn it, the music's amazing! <laughs> Maybe for just that reason. Yeah, we already established that surviving goblins are a bad thing. Yeah, I feel like uh, Miss Front Desk Lady there is a bit more genuinely happy when she's talking with him rather than with the others. Well, maybe that's just me. I would like to imagine that she is good at putting up an act. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is kind of part of the job. If you're a doom and gloom while handing out jobs, probably what are off-putting for young adventurers that you actually want to entice into the little guild thing and whatnot. In a way, that's a nice and at the same time tragic relationship, huh? I mean, I think what happened here is pretty obvious. So while uh, the girl was away in the city, the village got attacked by goblins. Mr. Goblin Slayer hit under the floor. And really could do nothing but watch as everyone got killed and raped and, well, all kinds of nasty stuff happened to them. Which, again, it's not the healthiest thing to watch as a child, or in general, I'd say. I mean, it's a nice ending, but doesn't really hold up to the opening, in my opinion. Next time? Mm -hmm. Not even. Yeah, we got a good junk left. <laughs> uh. 
it's a nice puppet show in a way. Not exactly puppets, but oh well. So he has folk tales sung about him at this point. I mean, maybe they don't really know that it's about him, or maybe they do. Well, maybe they do. I really, I'm not too sure on that one. Well, I guess there's my answer. Dum dum dum, elf girl, and I don't know, a dwarf? And I, I have no idea who the last guy is, or what the last guy is. Unexpected visitors. I like it when animes don't do a next time thing preview stuff because I really don't need it. Why? Who even needs it? Is... Are you... I don't even know how to properly say this now, but... Either you're interested in a show and you're gonna keep watching by what the show does rather than what it promises you is gonna happen next time. Plus, you know, if you're gonna do good storytelling and you can just properly set up expectations for what happened next time anyway. But... I just feel like next time, like these next time preview snippets, at best, just gonna give away stuff that's gonna happen, which is pretty much what trailers do, is all that trailers do nowadays anyway. Like, give away stuff, which is precisely why I try to avoid movie trailers, honestly. Especially when I already know I'm gonna watch something. For example, uh, like Marvel trailers, for example. I'm not the biggest Marvel fanboy there is, but I'm probably gonna watch whatever movie they do. Which just actually kind of goes to say how how well they've set themselves up, that, you, that people already know they're gonna watch their movies no matter what it's about, or at least they're gonna give them a chance. Anyway, point is, I don't watch trailers because I'm already pretty sure that I'm gonna watch the movie anyway. So the best thing a trailer is gonna do for me is spoil stuff. Which I really don't need. So, no trailers. Thank you. Anyway, this episode. So, what do we do even? We uh, sort of introduce the whole guild system a bit more, I think. So, like, uh, the people trying to brag to the front desk lady. I need to look up these names now. Uh, I really don't want to call them, keep calling them by my made-up nicknames. I might have to call, keep calling her by my made-up nickname, Uketsukeyo. Uketsukeyo. I mean, yeah, that's definitely her. Guilt girl. <laughs> her name's Guilt girl. <laughs> so that's Uketsukeyo, huh? Never mind, I'm gonna keep calling her front desk lady. <laughs> That's still a better description than Guild Girl. <clears throat> anyway, so Goblin Slayer, that one's pretty obvious. Then, uh, wait. Um, now that I look at these names, are these all nicknames things? Priestress? Cowgirl? A frickin'... They frickin' are. They just, they're just Japanese nicknames. Make it sound like. Ah, <laughs> oh. took me way too long to realize that. Honestly, I mean, I just kind of saw the names there. I'm looking on my anime list. Uh, Ona Shinkansa. I knew Ona was woman. Then the other one, the the pink-haired one we had today. Ushikai Musume. So I know Musume was girl. Then Yose Yunde for the elf girl. We just saw Yose type of fairy person, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that one. Uh, like either elf or fairy, not too sure. High elf archer. This is actually amazing when you think about it. Yeah, the witch we saw we, we saw earlier in the episode, the one with the big hat and the big boobs. 
<laughs> is Maju. They they are really all just nicknames. This is amazing. This is this is a, those are names made for me. I mean, too bad they are Japanese nicknames, so they're still hard to remember. But I want to give some credit for that right there. Honestly, that you. Uh, there's an, an anime called Amnesia, where, well, I think the title is pretty much a giveaway. The main character, a girl, spends, starts off the show literally not remembering anything, and we go from there. And the interesting thing about it is, throughout the whole show, we never learn her name. Like, there are people interacting with her who apparently know her and all that, but it's only a, she's only ever called Kimi, it's like you, or and at the whatever, basically various pronouns, but never her name. And it's this kind of thing that you don't really pick up on. Obviously, I mean, for me, when I try to talk about people and I'm thinking, okay, what are their names? But when you're just watching the show or something, you perhaps don't even notice it. I, I know I didn't notice when I watched the show until a friend of mine pointed it out, uh, calling her the hero, you know, like, why do we call her dad? Like, she doesn't have a name. Wow. <laughs> and it's kind of the same here. You have all... The whole cast doesn't have names. This is amazing. Freaking bloody amazing. So, I get to keep calling everyone nicknames. It's perfect. Okay, so we have Priestress, Cowgirl, High... High Elf Archer, I think it was. High Elf Archer, yes. Uh, I, I, I know her name is like Guild Girl, but I'm gonna keep calling her Front Desk Lady. Uh, yeah, then we have the witch and these other characters that haven't really properly appeared yet. I'm kind of blown away by this fact. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, I'm just disappointed I didn't realize it sooner. I mean, I looked at I looked at the name list for the previous episode too when I was talking about the priestess, uh, but I didn't really realize that Ona Shinkan was pri uh, female priest priestess basically. I didn't pay enough attention. My bad. Anyway, uh, that amazing revelation aside, we have, uh, we sort of introduced that Goblin Thalir is not the most popular dude around, because, well, he's a very high rank, I forgot, was Silver Rank the highest one, or was it uh, Gold? I could watch the first episode again to quickly look it up, but not now. Anyway, he is a high-ranked adventurer, but he takes these low-level goblin quests that everybody's already looking down on. Like, even the proclaimed people are looking down on them. It's just goblin. What do you know? Then the other thing, I really like that this no-name adventurer group we saw take the goblin quest survived. Uh, not necessarily because I care about them, but just... Uh, it does show that goblins are, how should I say this, rightfully looked down on, in a way. Like, obviously, uh, they can be, they can outsmart you on their own turf and on their own terms in that way, sort of thing. But at the same time, you just had the lowest level adventurers uh, successfully complete a goblin quest. Whether it was sheer dumb luck, or even if you say that goblins are a 50-50 chance for proclaimed adventurers, at the end of the day, that I think still kind of justifies that all the higher higher adventurers kind of look down at it. Uh, at the same time, we the Goblin Slayer even talked about it while he set the freaking tree on fire. How, yeah, okay, so you, you managed to shoot away one goblin that wandered into your village at some point. Good for you, and now you of the whole high esteem that you think you're so awesome that there's a week or something. But no. So anyway, he's kind of looked down upon and... Well, it's kind of nice actually that they formed a party. <laughs> they are the Priestress and Goblin Slayer. I can't get over the freaking fact that they don't have names. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's because I can't remember names anyway and I, I all, have all my name lists stuck over there. But you, you you construct the whole show and storytelling everything without giving people names. How do you do that? It's amazing. It's a bloody amazing. <laughs> anyway, so uh, 
elf girl, and I still think that guy might be a dwarf. And whoever the last one of the little group was, are gonna join Goblin Slayer as well. And I don't know, we're gonna keep going, slay some goblins. The show is amazing. The show is amazing visually, the soundtrack's amazing. And the fact that the characters don't even have names is just all the more amazing to boot at the end there. Boost, not boot. The show's amazing. That's gonna be all for now. Until next time, see you then. Bye.